I agree. I agree with Dr. Braverman. The brain is important. I'm going to talk about a part of the brain called the pineal gland and the production of melatonin. Melatonin is a molecule you probably know in reference to promoting sleep. Melatonin is much more than a sleep promoting hormone which I'm going to discuss during this presentation. It is regulated by light and darkness. Light in particular is inhibitory to it and by virtue of the fact that melatonin is a strong anti-cancer agent, light is killing you. This presentation is based on the following data. Female breast cancer is five times more common in the industrialized countries than it is in the non-industrialized countries. 50% of these cancers are not explainable by the conventional risk factors. Western countries are undoubtedly becoming 24-hour-a-day societies. In other words, we are eliminating from our environment darkness. Women, in fact, who work night shift have an increased incidence of breast cancer. Males who work night shift have an increased incidence of prostate cancer. And men and women who work night shift have an increase of colorectal cancer. Light at night does a number of things. It disturbs your biological clock in a process referred to as chronodisruption, and clearly it suppresses this very important agent that you produce normally exclusively at night, that is melatonin. The physiological levels of melatonin are known. The nighttime levels of melatonin are known to inhibit cancer. So when you are exposed to light at night, you are putting yourself in jeopardy. We evolved over a couple of hundred thousand years. And we evolved organs to take advantage of our environment. One of the organs we evolved was a clock, a biological clock called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and it precisely timed by the changing light-dark cycle. But of course, we have totally corrupted that. Light and darkness are very important for optimal physiology. Light perceived that is important in reference to clock is perceived by the eyes. This information is transferred through your optic nerve via what is referred to as the retinohypothalamic tract from the retina to the hypothalamus to the clock. The clock sits in the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus. You've heard a lot about the hypothalamus today. A lot of things important happen in the hypothalamus, including regulation of the anterior pituitary, regulation of dietary intake, the autonomic nervous system, and likewise the clock sits in here, suprachiasmatic nucleus, and then that information is transferred via a very discreet neural pathway to the pineal gland and tells the pineal gland either to synthesize and produce melatonin or not to synthesize and produce melatonin. Of course, you know what the brain is and you know where it is. This is all brain and here's the pineal gland. Certainly if the brain is the most important part, uh, most important organ, then the pineal gland is in the same category. It produces this very rhythmic production of melatonin, which I mentioned is the chemical expression of darkness. You only produce melatonin in your pineal gland at night. That is summarized here, but what I really want to show you is over here. Namely that during the day, if I take a blood sample from all of you now, all of you have low circulating levels of melatonin. I cannot distinguish one from another. Conversely, with the onset of darkness at night, your melatonin levels rise, peak in the middle of the dark period, and then attenuate before light onset in the morning. However, the amplitude of the nighttime rise varies greatly amongst individuals. Some of you have a very robust rise at night, others have a much attenuated rise. This rhythm is reproduced with 
remarkable fidelity from one night to the next. In other words, if you are a robust producer, you do so every night. Conversely, if you are a weak producer, you do that every night. Which means over the course of a lifetime, some individuals, considering this occurs every night of your life, some individuals produce much more melatonin than others. The question is, is this physiologically relevant? Is this difference meaningful? It appears to be, and that's what I'm going to go on to discuss. Of course, the other thing we've done is, well, I didn't personally do it, but my friend Thomas Edison did. He invented the light source. Artificial light, in fact, truncates darkness. By virtue of that, you also truncate the ability to produce melatonin because you can only produce it in the pineal gland at night. And we know that's the case in humans. If humans are kept in a light, dark environment of 16 hours of light and 8 hours of darkness, this is the melatonin rhythm. They produce melatonin for this duration. However, there are times of the year when darkness is much longer than eight hours. If you put those in same individuals in a different light environment with 10 hours of light and 14 hours of darkness, then they produce melatonin for a much longer period of time. That would be a very typical winter day in Orlando, Florida as an example. 10 hours of light, 14 hours of darkness. But there is not a human an industrialized country that normally experiences 10 or 14 hours of darkness on a daily basis. Likewise, those of you, because I no longer make the mistake, that get up at night and turn on a light, you immediately give your brain misinformation about the prevailing light-dark cycle. The only thing your brain interprets light to be is day. Day means you alter the biological clock by the eyes to the suprachiasmatic nucleus and you suppress melatonin. Here's an example of that. Humans kept in a normal light-dark environment with this being a dark period have this average melatonin rhythm. If they are exposed to low intensity light at night, you can immediately measure the dip in melatonin. You know the brain saw the light. You know the pineal gland responded to that light that the brain saw. Slightly brighter light causes a more depression, and a lighter, brighter light yet causes a greater depression. Now in this case, the light was on for one hour. Totally unnecessary. One second of light. If you turn on your bedside lamp at night for one second, your brain is not as stupid as you might think. It saw that light and it interpreted it as day and it truncated immediately the melatonin rhythm. So we are abusing our circadian system and our melatonin rhythm by the misuse of light at night. The system is very well defined. We know a great deal about it. It's light perception by the eyes, but it's not all white light. It's a very specific bandwidth, 460 to 480 nanometer light. This light is 380 roughly to 720 nanometer, but it's only a very narrow bandwidth that inhibits melatonin production and alters the clock. The red line indicates the blue wavelength of light where circadian rhythm sensitivity peaks. The black line indicates where visual acuity wavelengths peak, which is in the green. All light bulbs, whether incandescent or fluorescent, give off white light that includes this blue wavelength of light. Therefore, light at night is affecting circadian rhythms. If you wanted to protect your melatonin production, as the sun sets, you would shift to yellow, orange, or red light. This can be achieved with low wattage, 
colored light bulbs that emit the specific these specific colored wavelengths of light. One of the best ways to achieve this is with a salt lamp with a 5 watt orange, yellow, or red light bulb inside it. This is not task lighting. It's simple basic lighting that mimics firelight that we evolved under for hundreds of thousands of years. Firelight does not affect our circadian rhythms due to the wavelength of light it emits. Similarly, you'd have to be careful with your television and reduce its brightness and contrast in the evening to protect your circadian rhythms. Note the melatonin cycle in shaded colors. At what point would you want to truncate it? During physical repair? During psychological repair? It's best for the physiology for the full cycle to run for the full time. Not unlike your dishwasher. Would you expect your dishwasher to be clean, the dishes to be clean, if you cut it short every day? Increasing the possibility of a problem arising in the machine with bacteria and what have you. So cutting your melatonin cycle short would be like cutting your dishwasher cycle short and expecting the same result. If you would like to learn more, read the article, Lighting for the Human Circadian Clock, available at the designated URL. Thank you.